Hi everyone, in today's video, I'll be teaching you about a Scratch Blocks category called My Blocks. As you guys know, all of these blocks come in default in Scratch. But wouldn't it be cool to make our own blocks in Scratch? That's when My Blocks come in. Using My Blocks, we can create a lot and lot of blocks made by you, adding an input, a text, or a label. In today's video, I'll be teaching you exactly how to do so. So without much further ado, let's begin today's video. To create a block, go to the My Blocks tab with the pink circle on top. Click on Make a Block. You'll see three options, Add an Input, Add an Input Boolean, and Add a Label. For the first Add an Input, you'll see Number or Text, the second Boolean, and the third one is having no subtitle because it's a completely different option. Below these three options, you'll be able to see a checkbox written Run Without Screen Refresh. First, let's look at Add a Label. Add a label particularly specifies what is this block used for. For example, this block is used for to provide the name of a particular user. Once you click on OK, you will be asked to define this block. But let's go on to that later. That's what add a label is used for. Coming to the second one, add an input. Now, if you go to the operators tab, you'll see that these you know, sharp shaped blocks are actually booleans. Wait, what? I didn't know that. Well, now you do. These blocks with a really pointed end are known as booleans, which means it'll have either a true value or a false value. You'll be able to know, you know that by simply clicking on that particular block. There are so many blocks in the operator tabs that are actually booleans. And even more, most of them are even on sensing. For example, touching mouse pointer. Now you'll see in sensing that all of these sharp pointed blocks actually have a question mark at the end of it. Well, now you know because the answer can either be yes or no. So this is a Boolean value. Now you can even create a Boolean value in make a block section. Coming to the last one, add an input. This is mainly used so that you can add a number or text. Using this, you can even create your very own go to X and Y. Do you want to see how? Okay, let's do it. First, let's add a label telling us what exactly is this block used for. We already have a label text. Name this go to X. Don't add the X yet. Then add an input X. Also, in this label, put a space and put X and a colon. Now we have X as an input, then add another label and Y and an input. Click on OK. And now we have go to X and Y. But you'll see that it's blank over here. This is a question that even I had. Well, this basically means that you have to enter whatever is in here. Like suppose I want the cache to go to zero and zero, then I have to enter zero and zero. Now X will be considered, zero will be considered at X, and zero will be considered as Y. But first let's define it. Drag in a go to X and Y. As you can see, it looks very similar. But then just simply drag the X input stating that whatever the user enters over here will actually be the X position. So simply do that. And now drag in a one green flag clicked, and drag in your my block with the cat somewhere else. Now enter zero and zero. When the green flag is clicked, as you can see, the cat goes to the center. This is how we actually created our very own go to X and Y block. Now remember, if you just remove the define, the whole block will go itself. So always remember to move the use of the block before you remove the define. Let's remove that and that. Now let's go to this run without screen refresh. Now what's that? Run without screen refresh is used a lot in scrolling platformers. This is so that the user cannot see what exactly is going on because if they do, it's going to act super slow. So run without screen refresh is basically going to make this action go very quick, like a tick, just like that. 
So if you've seen most scrolling platformer videos like Griff Patches, then you'll know exactly what One Without Screen Refresh does. And that's it with my blocks. And now coming to defining a block. Let's just name this name. Now defining a block, every single time you create a block, it's going to bring a block itself called define. What's this? Well, define a block basically means you have to state what this block does, whether it's going to be saying hello for two seconds, or whether it's going to be setting a variable to zero, or whether it's going to be asking questions such as ask what's your name. Whatever it is, you must remember to define else when you attach it to a random event category block nothing's gonna happen so that's it with today's video everyone thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye